Good afternoon. This is Avram Shira from Eretz Israel. Welcome to our afternoon uh, Erev Shabbat talk. Today we're going to discuss an idea that's a little difficult to talk about sometimes, the idea of living or dying for God. In the Kavanot of the Arizal Kadosh and in other places in the Kabbalah, we have this concept of dying for Hashem. In our prayers, in our meditations, and if you look inside at the meditations that are involved, it, it involves the four letters of God's name, four letters of his mastery, four letters of his transcendence, which are three main names of God, Havaya, Adnut, and Ekye, if you're familiar with that language. And so the Torah, even on Shabbat, is asking us, the Kabbalah is asking us, when we go to pray before Hashem in the Amidah, that we imagine that we die in four different ways. <laughs> it's Shabbos, you know? Who wants to imagine dying on Shabbos? What is this? What a strange idea. Of course, no one's asking to be put to death, and the Torah is not asking us to literally die. But the imagination of dying for God is a form of death. And this imagination involves the four types of death penalty, right? Being having a giant boulder thrown on you, molten lead being poured down your throat, a sword across the neck. That's that's kind of standard, right? And of course. Um, henik or, or strangulation in the b biblical sense is not like being hung from a tree, but it's rather being being uh, strangled by two people pulling a, a rope sideways uh, that's been wrapped around your neck. So these four types of death penalty are pretty brutal. Uh, of course, they correspond to different types of sins. D sins that have to do with different parts of the body, different types of intentions and each of them corresponds to certain aspects as we said of God's name and also of the soul in a human being and you know it's all very nicely laid out for us this idea at least the simple idea of what you're doing but what are we doing why are we imagining dying for God? And on Shabbos, we assume that we've already done Shabbat, uh, done <laughs> repentance before Shabbat. So the Arizal steps in and tells us, well, the, I, the intention is that by being willing and imagining our death, we're actually drawing new light into the world that in actuality, by being willing to die for Hashem, we extend the life force in this world. And so, it's not so much about the dying as it is the expansion of life here in the human realm, the physical realm, that we find ourselves in. And so, by doing these meditations... We are effectively making ourselves willing to pass away for God. And it's the willingness itself that creates the vessel to receive the light. You know, that's worth repeating. The willingness, the willingness to die for God creates a much greater experience of life. And we draw that light from the higher realms into the physical realm by that intention. And that unifies the spiritual and the physical realm. And that's why we're here in the first place because God wanted to find a place in the lower realms 
a place in the f- material world that his transcendence could infuse the physical and show that God is not only the king of heaven, he's the king of all matter and all time and space and certainly all human activity. But he needs a place to do it, a place to appear. You know, he can appear on Mount Sinai once in a while, you know, give the Torah, fire and lightning, miracles happening all over the place, people being healed, people living long lives, healthy, clear, intelligent, sharp for 120 years. But that doesn't happen too often, God revealing himself, because he wants it to happen in another way. He wants it to happen through human activity. Because that's a greater sanctification of his name. When it happens through his presence in human activity. So when we talk about dying for God's name, we're really talking about living for God's name. But it's that willingness that creates the vessel the that in, enables us to experience the fullness of life. Now, I remember a long time ago, well, it seems like a long time to me, three decades, not so long in Jewish time, that I came to this realization that if I'm not willing to die for God, that I'm, I'm not going anywhere in this life. Because it feels like death all around, you know, people dying and bad news and, and, and illnesses and frustration and... Well, my own ignorance, to be honest with you. It felt like a little bit of death. You know, Reb Shlomo Karibach said, you know, every time we fast, it's like a little tiny death. Fasting. And we have a fast coming up on Sunday. And it's the fast of the 17th of Tammuz, the beginning of the three weeks when the walls of, the, of Jerusalem were breached. And of course the continuation of the remembering the tragedy of Jerusalem and losing the temple. But all of that activity that surrounds death in Judaism is only to conclude and extend life beyond our parameters of understanding. You know, people are, actually the number two thing people are afraid of is death. Number one is public speaking, <laughs> if you haven't heard that one. It's a study they did, and people equate, and the rabbis also equate public embarrassment to a form of death as well. I think I'd rather have the public embarrassment than the actual death, but okay, everybody, you know, where, <laughs> wherever they're, they shine the mirror. But the truth is, is that when we experience shame, public shame, well, what's, what, what's dying? Why is it called uh, someone who embarrasses his friend in public? Hayav Mita. It's as if he's, he's in, invoked the death penalty for embarrassing his friend because his friend experienced a little bit of death by that shame. Now, but why does the shame a death? Because I had an illusion in my mind about myself (laughs) that had to be taken away. And that's the thing that dies when we're embarrassed. People don't care. People are not looking for your shame. People are not looking to see you embarrassed on Facebook. People are are maudlin and, and, and grossly attracted to these types of fallen experiences because it's different and it's, well, I hate to say it, but it's a little darkly entertaining. But what's actually dying is the part of me that I don't really need anyways. And that's the part of me that I think matters to others. People love us for who we are. And people care about us because we are. And the shame that goes with 
public embarrassment is an imaginary self in the first place. And you know what? It's the opposite inverse of fame. Because fame is really what I think other people are thinking about me, which is absurd as well, isn't it? That if you think about what the other person is thinking about you, <laughs> that's, that's vanity. But it's, that's, what, that's what fame is. Oh, I'm famous. Well, you're famous. Well, that just means you're concerned with what other people are holding in their mind about you, as opposed to uh, being concerned about how I'm holding in God's mind. And what he is considered, what he considers important. So this little death that, that's being asked from us by the Kabbalists and these meditations, when we say Shema Yisrael and when we enter the Amidah, even on Shabbat, the day of life, the day of the celebration of existence, let's just understand what we're getting rid of is something we need to get rid of anyways. That's our ego. That's our vanity. And by just being willing, we already create the space for Hashem's light to appear in the physical realm. And that's a sanctification. And that's a unification where all worlds, physical and spiritual, unite and become one. You know, it... It's something that you can learn inside, out. You can meditate on the names, or you can just see the image. See the image of one of these types of death that really, I deserve this and this and this and this. And you see it and you feel a tiny spark of it. It's enough to make us reestablish, I should say, our spiritual posture with God. Our spiritual posture, meaning I, I, I get an adjustment you know, between what I think is the reality and what, well, is the, a much greater reality. So that spiritual adjustment takes place just by imagining that we're not going to be here. You know, by imagining that little moment of the death penalty sentencing at the base din downtown, that's enough to get the adjustment we need. And that actually extends new life into the world and ultimately, that's what Shabbat does. Shabbat doesn't ask us to die, but you see the meditations do. But the idea, the idea is we're only giving up our, our relationship to the physical for a little bit of time in order to focus on something much greater, and that is our relationship to the spiritual, to the eternal, to the infinite, and to that spark that is in all of us and is everywhere. So God bless you with the Holy Shabbos, and the, the desire to live for God, the real desire to live for Him, and the willingness to do the opposite, if it, God forbid, ever became necessary. And we'll unify the worlds and make His presence felt in this world, and then we'll see how much goodness will come down to everyone, everywhere, as soon as possible. Shabbat Shalom. We we'll look for you on all the platforms this week. Continuing our work in Likuti Moran, we're in Torah 28, and uh, there's a lot of real estate left to cover, but that's why we're here. All the best to all of you.